done deal. Okay, so going back to our thing, one to 10. Okay. <laughs> um, so you were asking me to clarify when it comes to, I was asking you, if you were to find, for example, three mm -hmm. men physically attractive, mm -hmm. would you be able to, for example, say, he's more attractive than this one and this one's more attractive than the other? Um, yes, I would be able to. Like or, may I, or maybe they would all be attractive. Sure. It would depend. For example, perhaps there's 100 people in a room, say uh -huh. 50 of them are men. Yeah. You could, to some degree, put them in order of, you could maybe say, well, that's mm -hmm. the most attractive guy in this room. There could probably be guys that were more attractive, but maybe some would be kind of equally of attractive. Yeah. Certainly. There mm -hmm. could certainly be men of a comparable mm -hmm. physical attractiveness. Similar. And likewise, you might see a few men in a room who you find unattractive. Maybe less attractive. Who you're not attracted to. Yeah. And you could say to some degree that there's degrees to how not attracted to them you are. Yeah, I do agree with that. Okay, so I mean, the 1 to 10 scale system is basically that. She's saying it's subjective. So like if you go to a muse an art museum, she could say all these paintings are beautiful, but there's certain ones that I'm more drawn to, and you can rank all the paintings, yeah. but you can still acknowledge that they're all beautiful. Thank you. I think That's it's okay saying. as a Christian to understand that beauty is objective. Like even in the Bible, it talks mm -hmm. about the Bible records saying that Sarah was beautiful. Yeah. You know, Rachel was more beautiful than Leah. Mm -hmm. You know, Esther was That's beautiful. A good point. That's why she That's was chosen point. by the king because mm -hmm. she was so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so it's okay. Like, it's okay if we're not all tens. It's okay if, you know, yeah. if we're honest about that because it does help appreciate you know, objective beauty, we can appreciate it without feeling devalued by it. But it's not objective because you take all the tens in one city and bring them to a room full of Victoria's Secret yeah. models and every guy would agree that their rating goes down. So how is it objective? That is a really there, good point. Sorry, are, I think it is subjective um, though. There mm -hmm. are objective traits, like women across the bar find taller men, you know, more handsome. If they've got a wider jawline, sharper jawline, that's more attractive to them. You know, wider shoulders, broader shoulders, that's attractive because those are all signs of high T, high testosterone levels. So biologically, women across the board, whatever country you want to go to, women are attractive to, attracted to um, things about men that show that they're good leaders, strong providers, strong protectors. And so it's a biological thing. Like, it's not a shallow, you know, conceited, vain thing. And in the same way, men also have, you know, traits that they seek in a woman because it communicates to them that she is feminine, that she can carry a child because men really want to, you know, procreate and have children and carry on their bloodline. And so they want women who, you know, who objectively have wider hips and fuller breasts and things like that that sign um, gives a sign of fertility and so it's okay like it's okay to be biologically wired it's okay to have a history as a human race and to have preferences men and women both have preferences and the subjective part I think that's a great thing because if you're 411 if a man is 5'5 five five or just five foot tall that's perfect for you you know because he's still taller than you because he still communicates protected protection and provision to you so that's the subjective part, but there are biological traits. But yeah, there's a subjective part. Like if you walked around UCSB, because we're in Santa Barbara, and went to like the hottest guys at UCSB, and then you like, they're a 10 to the people that live here. And then you ask like the most beautiful movie stars or whatever, TikTok people, whoever you want to bring, if they're a 10, they wouldn't say that because they're just like average looking people. Like it just depends who the audience is. So True, but isn't it kind of just trying to be kind of politically correct when you're just trying to say that, oh, like, you know, everyone's beautiful. Like, you're, you're just trying to not answer the question you're trying to leave. But the harsh reality is, is that, like, attraction matters. And obviously, men look at it. Men are very vis visual creatures. Right. And women also, they do go based on attractiveness, even though obviously they're going to lean more into, like, personality and the, in, the full package. But mm. the reality is, is that people are going to look at how you but look. But attraction that is different to everyone. Like, you could think yeah. someone is a 10 out of 10 and I look at them and I'm like I would never talk to them a day in my life it's and, both yeah. it can be objective and, and guys can be attracted to girls they don't think are objectively attractive yeah. either that they would rank a 5 so attraction and attractiveness don't even usually go and I can hand. say like I can look at someone and be like yeah like they're like objectively attractive but they're not my type yeah. like or girls can be really turned on by confident guys who they would still objectively in terms of looks rate like a 2 right but that could be the guy who makes them more wet than they've ever been in their entire life that's why I think the rating system is kind of irrelevant to dating dynamics yeah I totally agree I was just saying that I just want to ignore the subjective part of rating because as I mentioned I just think that we're we were all created beautiful and I don't think there's a point in being subjective with ratings 
Well, well, I think it's kind of delusional because it's like you have to, you have to, the, the rating has to be there, right? Because it's like <laughs> we see, we yeah. see attraction in people, right? I mean, this is not well, like yeah, we for do. anybody, it's just uh, a debate. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but what I'm saying is, is like guys are going to find like certain girls attractive, right? And then certain girls are going to find something else attractive. Like that's just yeah. how the world works. Like it's like a, it's like a harsh reality to face, right? Yeah, but a man could be a solid 10, but live in his mother's basement. So I feel like there's also multiple different rating skills on a 1 to 10 standard. Well, sure. I mean, there's all kinds of factors. I mean, there's status, there's personality, there's there's money. Um, but, w- I mean, we are kind of specifically talking about f- just physical appearance here. Um, but you said that the 1 to 10 rating scales are relevant? I think it's kind of inaccurate because, like I said, inaccurate. you take all the tens of one city and put them in a room with other girls. So I don't really see what the point of it is. And like I was saying, I don't think most people actually factor in that rating into their actual attraction to someone, like that objective sense of attractiveness. Because, like I said, guys could be turned on or like have the best sex of their life with a girl who's less attractive than their wife because there's something about that interaction that turns them on. Mm. And same with girls. And even like you just said, yeah, there's objective cues, but two people who look exactly the same could walk into a room, but if one's wearing a red shirt and one's wearing a blue shoot, pe- people will rate the one in a red shirt higher, right? So that's why I think like we think we're looking objectively, but really we're factoring in like clothing, confidence. If someone walks in with like an air of confidence, we're going to rate them higher. So that's why I think it's useless. Yeah. Well, I mean, certainly I, I, the way you dress and present yourself is going to have some impact on how someone deems and how, de- excuse me, how someone rates you. Same with personality, same with status, same with whatever. It, you mentioned confidence, for example. Um, and certainly you, it, it's not, I don't think when we're talking about the one to 10 rating scale, we're not saying looks is the only factor when it comes to attractiveness, but when it, we're speaking about something very specific and we're speaking about physical attractiveness. Yeah, and I'm saying like even physically wearing a shirt on your body can change your rating the way people objectively rate you drastically. Sure, and, and for example, if, if, and someone, if someone has a positive, sunny disposition, if, they smile, yeah, instead of if they're chipper, if they're smiling, mm-hmm. that in itself just purely yeah. on the physical level can make them appear more physically attractive. Mm-hmm. But I think, for example, um, I guess where, where it matters, if, if we look at someone who's, if you lined up 100 people and you said, hey, they all generally said, this person's a 10. Looks wise, they're a 10. Um, whether that's a man or a woman, that's going to have an impact when it comes to their dating life. If someone is a 10 in terms of looks, can you agree that they're probably going to fare better than someone who is ranked lower? Well, it depends, because I think red pillars will be the first to argue that girls don't really factor in looks. It's like a cardinal I point of attraction. That, they factor in status and height more, right? So um, I think looks, I, I mean, I think looks are pretty important. Mm-hmm. 